Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the March general meeting of the Sun City Computer Club. Our agenda doesn't change month to month. Treasurer's report, membership, computer club matters, our classes, community matters, favorite apps are back, and our future feature presentation. Treasurer's report, uh, in simple numbers, we're in good shape. <laughs> uh, if our, all our inventory went down, we couldn't afford to replace it. But we'll get along, all right. Uh, with uh, 8,978 available unallocated funds, uh, we're safe, we're solvent. And thanks to you, our Grafton Food Pantry donations of almost $185 year to date is terrific. Thank you for that. Our membership numbers keep growing. One year memberships at 490, our three years at 1007. Total 1497. Computer Club Matters, our meeting schedule hasn't changed. Second Thursday of the month, like today. Our lab is open on Mondays and Thursday morning, 9 to noon. The Apple Group meets on the first Tuesday of the month at 9 a.m. And the Photography Group will resume their meetings come the 6th of April. <coughs> Our meeting schedule next month, the Hunter Huntley Police will be here in force to discussing computers at work. Their work, not, not yours. In May, we're going to talk about password managers. Are they a good idea? Most of us think so, but not all of us use them. In June, we're going to go back and revisit <coughs> Excuse me. Revisit home automation. There's been many uh, improvements and availability of product. <coughs> Sorry for home automation. Ah, who's got some of these at home? All right. Yeah. Would you Would you like to digitize them and put them on a hard drive, perhaps, or a, or a memory stick? Well, we spent some of our money, and we bought a, a second. Codex slide scanner due to, due to an increase in interest and usage. So now we've got room for two people at a time to scan their slides. Classes are free for members. No registration required, just show up. Now do remember to bring your passwords just in case you need them to access your device. Here's our March classes. And I don't know if Ralph wants to talk about futures today or not. Uh, I, I don't have anything for after March, but we do have the list four yet. And, um... Yeah, we have four classes coming up. iPhone basics next week. Uh, what makes a good photo? This is an interesting class. The question is not about the technology, not about the equipment, <clears throat> but a definition of what really makes a good photograph. And the class deals with that, not equipment and camera settings and such. We have our Android smartphone basic and more class at the end of the month. And what's become a very popular class is the one on Windows 11. Uh, Shelly did a Zoomer class last month at 86, which is the highest number we've had for a class on Zoom, which means there's a lot of interest in it. So if you're thinking about upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, this is a good class to attend. And the 25th at 10 a.m. Community Matters, Regency Square. Now, if you're not familiar with Regency Square, it's the 80 plus acres of vacant land south, the borders on Kreutzer, west of Princeton, north of the Alden facilities, and east of neighborhood seven. A developer has made a proposal there 
for rental properties uh, two weeks ago to the village board. No votes were taken. It's not a complete proposal yet. No action has been taken. Uh, it'll continue to be in the news until something does happen. And one of the final things that will happen will be an opportunity for, uh, shall we say, public comment. <laughs> so just be aware that something is going to happen one way or another to those 80, 80 plus open acres. The spring, spring Consumer Showcase coming up on the 24th of March. Community gardens, for those of you that have a green thumb or would like to have a green thumb, you're taking reservations now. Uh, the next Sun City board meeting is the 23rd. Smart 911 911 is available to all residents. In case you missed it in the recent lifestyles, this was on one of the early pages of the magazine. Smart 911 is something for your mobile devices that reports your actual location as opposed to the physical location that's connected to your phone bill. Strongly encourage everyone, and it's right up there, www.smart911.com, to register so when you need to place an emergency call, you'll get the response to where you're located. Now, you can go to page, I don't know, seven or eight in Lifestyles and read it. I know it's too small to read here, but it's very important for all of us to do it for our own protection. <clears throat> Favorite apps, Malware Bytes, Gas Buddy, Gas Guru. <laughs> Malware Bytes, everybody's heard about cybersecurity and potential cyber warfare going on. Malware Bytes is a free software application Download from malwarebytes.com. It's good on Windows, Mac, Chromebook, Android, and iOS. Basically, it gives you the free version. You have to trigger it. It will scan your device for any bad stuff, ransomware, uh, virus, anything, and help clean it up. It's worth a few minutes to download it and to use it. Malwarebytes. We're going to work on a tech note coming out uh, in a week or two. We'll talk more about malware and other things you can do, other steps you can take to protect yourself and your equipment. Gas buddy, gas guru. Anybody buy gas lately? <laughs> I took out a second mortgage. Um, gas buddy, gas guru will give you the lowest prices available near you. Unfortunately, there seems to be a collusion on Route 47 gas stations. They're all the same and they're all high. Uh, if you're a member at Costco, uh, their regular gas I found was 20 cents a gallon cheaper yesterday than anywhere on 47. So it might be, not that I'm promoting Costco, but it might be worth joining to save the money. But Gas Buddy, Gas Guru, download them to your devices, and you should, and they're free, and you can save some some pocket change. David, Woodlands, Costco, Sands are all the same range. If you want to promote that, rather than Sands, don't want to do it uh, enough said. Nozaletti <laughs> <laughs> just pointed out that Costco, Woodman. Woodman's, and Sam's Club are all less money than the, uh, the Route 47 people. Now, Woodman's is a debit card only, as opposed to the others where you can use their cards. So. Uh, uh, Costco. Discover card. That's right. That's right. Woodlands now does accept Discover. So that is an option. The old, the old gas station, you could pay cash. Oh, yeah. Those, those that still know anything about cash, that's, <laughs> that's still an option. Wow. 
our featured presentation, what's new for all of us at the new Huntley Library. And our presenter, Doug Catalco, is the marketing director for the Huntley Library. And let's give him a welcome, please. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Okay. Um, I was going to start just to see the uh, uh, scope of the room. How many of you actually have a Huntley Library card? Uh, that, you have no idea how happy that makes me. There's no better time before I even get started to get it now. Um, we are so happy uh, about opening the full library. Um, as a marketing person, I was, I was telling Ken, I don't like to do things halfway. And we were kind of forced into doing things halfway uh, by uh, adding on to an existing building. And we know that uh, getting into our library for the last year and a half until we opened was difficult. We know that not having a book drop was difficult. We know so many, we learned so many things over the course of this two-year project. And, uh, but before I do anything, the first thing I have to do, and I do it in my presentation as well, is just say thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your patience. And uh, do I have a clicker? Or yeah, something? we'll get, we'll get there. Okay. Um, but I just want to give you a little uh, feedback on me. Um, I've been with the library 17 years. You, this is my first time presenting to you, so excuse me if I'm a little rusty because it's been about a year and a half, obviously, with COVID since we've been going out and doing things. But you probably are familiar, if, uh, if you've attended these meetings, uh, with two of my uh, co-workers and one of my former co-workers. Uh, you probably know Pam Cardenas, who's uh, done some e-book presentations with you and also probably Leanne Porsche, who was uh, in the position I am now previously, and she's retired and moved on. Uh, we're still, we've been best friends for a long time, and uh, I still see her occasionally. So um, just before we get started here, like I said, I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, we know uh, the last two years of you know, not having a whole library and not being able to really access an entranceway that made sense. Uh, we were well aware of what happened, and we just want to say, uh, it was not the, the best way to do things, but it was the only way that we could remain open during that time and still provide services to the community. Um, anyway, I started the library, thank you, um, 17 years ago. And I first got hired uh, two hours a week to do their website. And I, I know you're computer people, so if you're familiar with something called Microsoft Front Page, that's what the library was using. And it was archaic when I started. And we changed them to uh, a more modern content uh, management system that I had written. And then eventually we moved to uh, WordPress, which is pretty much the standard that's used today. And after about a month's time, two different people left the library. Uh, one was the person that did their uh, monthly newsletter. And the second was the one that did uh, most of the marketing uh, for the community and outreach. And uh, I was there, like I said, working two hours a week, probably for about a month, and they offered me a full-time position. And uh, I came from New York. And in New York, if you're familiar with their libraries, they're enormous. They're spectacles. They are unbelievable. And I lived there for 22 years. I moved to Las Vegas after that who also have a phenomenal library district. The Clark County Library District is insane. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful buildings, three, four, five stories tall. And I came here and I went to the library for the first time and I was like, wow, I, I, everything that I knew a library to be, it was, it was a smaller version, but it didn't have a whole lot of the things that I, I used in the library. So it was kind of a personal mission for me. I had a daughter at the time who was five, and I have two other children now. They are uh, 17 and 14 now, but at the time they weren't born. And we knew we were having one, and then our, our second one was a little bit of a surprise, but, you know, that's always fun. And um, I wanted the library to be a place for them that it was for me. So it became kind of a personal mission for me as well as obviously my job uh, to try to get a bigger and better library for the Huntley area. And there was no better thing for me to see in January when we opened and finished that project. So again, thank you, and, and let's get started on the presentation. Um, we do have a great new library. What am I doing? Here, just, uh, just click. Not aiming at anything. OK. Doesn't seem to be clicking. <laughs> this one, right? 
So, the Omni Hall Area Public Library opened on uh, February 7th, 2022, and uh, we had a little bit of a delay. Um, I'm sure everybody in the world right now is experiencing supply chain issues, and we had some of our own. Um, it's here, and it is fresh, it's brand new, and of course, like I said, we want to say thank you to Sun City Huntley. Your continued support through the project, it has always been our mission to provide the best library services we can to this community. And in that same vein, we're always open to suggestions. So if there's something that we don't offer that you want to see, if you come in and you visit our information desk, they have comment cards, you can ask them, uh, fill it out, or you can do it online. You can send us emails to reference at library, uh, however you want to communicate with us. We're always open to suggestions. If there's something that you'd like to see at the library, whether it's a presentation or a program or an event or a service or a book, just ask. We try to accommodate everybody. So what's new at the library? A lot. <laughs> We're gonna go through a little before and after, and you can, if you've been in the building, you, you would know uh, we had these giant vaulted ceilings. And one of the things that we've always heard about that older building was that it echoed, and it was loud, and you could hear people from one end of the building to the other end of the building. Well, if you look at the top picture, that's the original, and if you look at the bottom, that's the new. And if you can see the white areas in, in, in the uh, ceiling, those are sound buffers. So now when you come in the building, it's quiet. It's quiet, and there's no echo. It's still big, still has the vaulted ceilings, but all the lighting is echo-friendly, and we've done the best job we could to try to keep it quiet in the main areas of the library. We have a completely new entrance, and this is uh, one of my favorite things. Uh, I don't know if you were ever in there in the winter, but when you open that front door, the wind would knock you over as you were walking in, and anybody that was in the way would feel this giant breeze hit them like it was a, a wild hurricane or something. And they changed the way that the entrance is. It has a double door set now, and what it does is it allows us to do several things. First, shield the people inside the building and keep it warm. There's a heater in there, and it's a really nice uh, vestibule uh, for people to stay warm when it's cold if they're waiting for a ride, or come in and get warm immediately, and it's a, a large vestibule so it can hold many people. But the other thing that it was made for was when you walk in, you can move directly to your left, and head down to our program rooms and our children's area. If you go straight, you're into the main library. But what we can do is we can lock that second set of doors, and now we're able to offer full 
three program rooms, after hours programs, and before hours programs. So we'll be able to do things at night and in the morning, early before we're open and after we're closed. And that's something we have never been able to do. I mean, if you were in our library when we had our three trailers, um, that room capacity was 30. <laughs> now we have the ability to have 150 plus seated, more unseated. And we have the, the ability to divide the rooms and provide different programs. In fact, uh, one of our 55 plus programs just took place and uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And I don't know if any of you attended it, but if you did, thank you. But it was, uh, it was wonderful. And since we opened the doors, all of the new areas are getting used quite frequently. The other thing we added was a drive-up window. This was one of the most requested things uh, through our referendum project that was asked for. Um, when it's cold here, nobody wants to get out of their car and have to walk through the snow and drop off their materials. Um, now you can drop them off at a window and you don't even have to leave. You can, um, I'll, I'll get to you, <laughs> and, and you can uh, pick up your holds and other materials as well from the window. So one of the things we're working on is the height of the drop, uh, drop off window. <laughs> so, yeah, is that, is that what you were gonna ask me? Yeah. Okay, so, so this is a great story and I'm gonna tell it to you. I probably shouldn't, but I'm gonna tell it to you. So we're driving through this to test this and immediately staff are like, yeah, that's way too high. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. You gotta get out of your car to use it. <clears throat> And one of the designers, the, the architects, uh, they drive a Mazda Miata, which is a really tiny car. And we called her and we said, hey, we really want you to try this window. And sure enough, she drove through and she had one of those holy beep moments, if you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and um, we were kind of like, yeah, how, how did that even happen? So. Through the two-year project, we've, we've had a couple of instances where we kind of were scratching our heads and saying, well, how did that happen? This was definitely the, the icing on the cake. So it is going to be repaired. We have it on the schedule right now. We originally thought it was going to be this week that they were going to do it, but they want to make one more adjustment on the call button as well. So beginning in April, and I don't have an exact date, but if you look at our website and you follow us on social media, we will have that date for you. They're going to take it out, they're going to readjust it, and it will be the proper height. So I apologize on behalf of the library for anybody that's had difficulty using it. But we had to have a sense of humor, and I hope you guys can understand that. In, and we are working on fixing it. It's, it's ridiculous, and we know it's ridiculous. So look for that, and, and it to work properly sometime in April or May. Okay, so the information desk is pretty much in the same location that it, it was previously. If you walk straight through the front doors, you're gonna be directly at the information desk. And that's where if you have suggestions or you have questions or inquiries or wanna sign up for a class or a, a program or a service, you'll have friendly people, including uh, Pam Cardenas, that will be there to help you. The checkout desk is to the left when you walk into those front double doors, and that's where you would check out your materials or get a library card or um, return materials or if you have something damaged that you need to let them know that was damaged and it wasn't your fault, um, make sure they, they know it there. And then right, if you look at the picture on the bottom, right to the right side of that, uh, those are self-checks, and that's how you can just come in and check out your materials all by yourself. This is a brand new room, and this was one of the most requested things as well. It was, I think, number three on the list of, of most requested things to have at the library. And this is a brand new local history room. So we have um, we have photos going back to the 18 or late 1800s, 1890s, uh, in our archives uh, of the Huntley area. We have yearbooks from the high schools. We have um, documents and historical. Um, relics in our collection. Some of them are on display right now. If you can see that top shelf, that's um, an original uh, Thomas picture of Thomas Huntley, the founder of Huntley. Um, the Our Town Coloring Book is a, a coloring book of all of the major uh, historical sites of Huntley. They're free, and there's a map for a scavenger hunt. Um, but those cabinets in the back and the bottom one contain books about Huntley, going back is the 1900s, and that stuff is all accessible to you. All you have to do is come in and say, I would like to see this stuff, 
and they'll let you uh, they'll let you look. There's tables set up there that you can bring the cases out or uh, the folders out and put all that material and set it out and just enjoy some of Huntley's great history. Uh, our children's library that opened first. So if you had come to the library through that temporary entrance you would see uh, this room. It's enormous. They deserve it. I mean, they're, our kids, they, if, you, if you ever look at checkouts in the library, children's books are the number one thing that we check out. Uh, this room is amazing. It has so many fun things for them. So if you have kids or grandkids that you want to bring by, they have uh, Lego tables and train tables. Um, they have different kinds of books, whether it's audio books, e-books, or physical books, magazines, uh, activities, uh, and, and we just did our puzzle exchange in that room, and it was enormous. I don't know if any of you participated in that, but it was one of the biggest ones we've ever had. So again, thank you for that. Um, another new room, the quiet room. Another highly requested thing. So because the library was predictably loud, um, we wanted to have a place where somebody could go, and if they wanted to bring a laptop or um, a book, and just have a quiet place to come in and read. We now have it. It has a, a variety of different seating options in there. And the number one rule is quiet. It's if you need a place where you want to even take a nap, come on in. <laughs> uh, our collaborative and uh, conference rooms are also new. And they're in the main part of the library. So if you come in the front doors and you make a left, you'll see both of them. Um, the collaboration room has been used every day since we've been open. It's really fantastic. And it's built for four to six people. We've seen a lot of uh, business uh, people come in and take, taking uh, signing contracts and doing things like that, but we've also seen a, an uptick of teens in the library. We had a fantastic article in the Huntley High School Voice that really kind of resonated with the teens, and they've been using this room for their collaborative projects. The conference room will hold up to 10. Um, you, more comfortable probably with eight or nine, but 10 it will see. And that room is equipped with uh, a giant, both of them actually have giant screen televisions that you can uh, cast to or hook up a computer to and do a presentation. Uh, they also have uh, Zoom cameras in there so that if you wanted to Zoom your meeting, you could do that as well. Now, this is another huge thing that was requested by everyone here that uh, took place or took part in our surveys. They wanted more seating. You know, we didn't have any. I mean, I don't know how many of you raised your hands or how many of you remember what lack of seating we had. There was a few seats in front of the fireplace on one side of the fireplace, and that was it. There were really no other places to sit comfortably in the library. That's changed. We have several, whether it's in the fiction or the nonfiction area, whether it's in the children's room, whether it's in the hallway that leads to that room, whether it's down the center of the fiction and nonfiction area the children's room, and the center picture on the bottom there is our teen area. There's plenty of spaces to sit comfortably with your friends and relax, work on projects, surf the internet, however you'd like to do it. There's plenty of room. Now, as a computer club, I thought technology would be something you guys would want to hear about. Um, and I actually am so impressed with the things that you have here, <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them in person for the first time. But we offer some of the same things. So if you don't have a computer, which is probably nobody in this room, <laughs> we have computers that you can use for free. And you can check your email and work on projects. They're equipped with Office uh, and some other software that you can utilize. And they're free of charge. You just show them your library card, and you can set up a session for up to two hours at a time. And then if nobody else needs the computer, you can renew it. Um, in addition, that area also has a, a print fax scan station, which if you don't have a printer at home or your printer's not working, you can actually use an app and send your print jobs directly to the library and then pick them up at your convenience. And if that doesn't work for you, we have uh, large flatbed scanners and uh, a couple other different types of scanners that you can bring your documents in, scan them, and, and print them as well. So that's again all. Uh, there's minimal cost on it, but the the the, the, um, the stations available at you know at your convenience. So if you have a lot of documents you need to scan, you can come in. You know, just let them know I have this many, and they'll help you. Uh, they you know if 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 something's not working right, they will assist you. They're here to help. But other technologies that we offer, um, I think 
one of the things to, to know about libraries is they're about economies. You know, we service everybody. We service, um, you know, the person that can't afford to stream. We, we service the person that, you know, has seven computers or the latest iPhone. Every, every genre, every group, every, every uh, race, creed, and color is served by the library. And we try to meet everybody's needs. So one of the things that uh, came to our attention, and I'll talk about this a little more uh, later, but uh, one of the things that came to our attention is that people don't want to pay for streaming services. And, you know, when you don't know how to use it or uh, it's unfamiliar to you, um, it's an obligation of, I think, I think at least, of a library to offer those services for you to try before you buy. Just like a book. If you come in and you get a book and you want to read a book or you have a favorite author and maybe you don't want to, excuse me, just shell out $35 for a hardcover book, you have the option to get it at the library. So we've always looked at what else can we offer in that same vein. Well, Roku Ultras are HDMI devices that you can hook up to a computer or a television and stream. And ours have uh, PBS Network, Netflix. Um, we put movies in there, and, you know, new release movies uh, through Vudu. And you can borrow one of those at the library. We have, I think, six or seven in the collection right now. And we're looking at adding some other options. Um, but they are available to check out, and it's literally plugging it into an HDMI port on your device, and you can stream Netflix for free using the library's Roku's. We also have cool pad hotspots. Um, I'm not sure, you all have cell phones, I would assume, or most of you have cell phones. And you know, you can turn your phone into a hotspot, so it's basically a source to get internet. Well, that costs money. We actually have cool spots, uh, cool pad hotspots, and we're just about to put um, some Alcatel Link Zone 2s into our collection. And what they will let you do is you turn this device on, and it's basically a roaming uh, Wi Fi connection. So, uh, 4G, 5G, you'll be able to take it. Say you're going on a drive and you don't want to use your hotspot or you don't have one, you can take this with you and connect in the car, connect in a hotel, connect wherever you want to connect and utilize free internet services uh, by checking that out of the library. And lastly, uh, we're going to have a service. We just received a grant. Um, this is uh, something that's, I, I, when you realize some things after you do your homework, it's, it's kind of shocking. But uh, one of the things that uh, we found this year was that the unemployment rate in both Kane and McHenry County is among the highest in Illinois. And we were offered the opportunity to do a grant called the Bouncing Back Grant. And what that was was to help um, improve that number. And we received uh, 50, almost $50,000 uh, to hire an instructor and to bring in six Chromebooks and six Alcatel hotspots that will be able to be checked out by less fortunate people that don't have an internet connection or a computer at home. And what this grant does is it, it brings the ability to take technology to people that don't have it. And in tune, uh, we've been offering a series of new classes that are job uh, assistance related. So uh, resume writing and uh, cover letter writing, uh, using the library's resources to help you find a job and get better at those things, uh, using online services to apply for jobs, and the Office uh, 365 suite is going to start in a couple of months as well as part of those lessons to help people improve themselves. And that's, again, what we're all about, is how can we help everybody? So we saw that that was a, a, a really unbelievable number, and we want to try to help bring it down. So the, the state agreed with us and gave us a grant, and those things will be available really soon. I actually just finished uh, doing the hard work for the cases and getting them uh, with our crew and our tech crew got them processed. So uh, you'll be able to check those out if you attend one of those classes and you, can, you don't have an internet connection or you need an internet connection. All these other things up here though, everybody can get those. But if I'm going too fast, just tell me, I'll slow down. Okay. The Creative Studio, this is my favorite new place. It's, uh, uh, this is the kind of thing I was talking about when I said, when I grew up in these big libraries, they had these things. and. Um, they weren't quite available to the degree that we have now, but this is my favorite room, hands down. So in this room, and I have a list that will follow this, um, you'll be able to explore all kinds of technology. And I go back to that analogy of try before you buy. You know, some of this stuff is actually pretty affordable, but 
you know, you buy it and you use it a couple times and then it sits on the shelf. But if you had a special need or a project where you needed to make, I don't know, a dowel, or you needed to make, uh, maybe you had a set of those uh, stacking shelves and one of the legs broke <laughs> and you needed to replace it. Um, you know, or maybe you need to design um, a dress for your granddaughter's prom or, or something for yourself. Um, we wanted to have a place where somebody that didn't have all of those things in their house could come and find a way to be able to do their project. And that's our creative studio. It is uh, open right now. And I just want to let everybody know, we, we, we want everybody to have access to everything, but we have to start slow. So it, right now, we have uh, a variety of machines in there. And what we're doing to introduce them to the community is we're having classes. And if you attend these classes, and they're for all ages, you can see what the machine that made the craft or the item that you're making uh, in person and learn about that machine. And then eventually, and this is down the road a little bit, but eventually, you'll be able to come in and work with our uh, technology studio technician and learn how to use the machine yourself. So we're introducing everything slowly through classes, but then eventually you'll be able to come in and use them yourselves. So this is what's in there, and it's a pretty impressive list to start, and it's not everything. So we have quilting, crochet, knitting, uh, supplies and equipment. There's a button maker in there, so if anybody needs to make buttons, we have a large size laminator, which is for posters and large size items. We have a Saturn laminator, which is the smaller one, maybe like, you know, for like your identification cards or uh, something like that, or an eight and a half by 11 photo that you need laminated. Um, we have a Singer Inspiration sewing machine, and we have a Designio Serger. So if you're, if you're familiar with those, uh, they're, they're pretty top of the line. And, and if you really wanted to make something, you could make something pretty spectacular. Digital media conversion, which I was, I, I was actually in awe of your Kodak uh, slide scanner. <laughs> um, we will eventually have that too. I, I, but right now, we're starting with uh, digital uh, conversion. And we have an ion turntable that will convert vinyl records into digital format. Uh, we have a reshow cassette player, which will take a cassette and uh, format it to digital. And one of the things we're waiting on, because of supply chain issues, is the VCR cam or camcorder to DVD. That's the last item for that uh, immediate setup. But uh, once that's done, that, you'll see that in our newsletter, and that'll be made available to everyone. Uh, 3D printing. You know, we had very uh, high expectations of what we would be able to do there. And we, we planned a long time to have some really solid machines in there. And um, I don't know how many of you guys know Ralph Hardy and Nancy Hardy. Um, but Ralph passed away, and his, um, his legacy is that room. Um, so many people donated um, for that cause, and all the equipment in there and, and that room has been pretty much financed by Ralph's legacy. And I can't thank them enough, uh, and anybody that donated enough. But because of it, we have uh, this, this amazing amount of materials in there the 3D printers, uh, the Prusa i3 MKS, that's a filament printer. And I can get into what the differences in of 3D printers are, um, but we can do that afterwards. I'll take your questions and anything that you want to ask me. But a filament printer, it's a spool, and it fills filament into this printer, and it takes your artwork, and it makes it this incredible 3D item. So it could be you know, a little action figure or a boat or you know, the leg of a table or, you know, uh, some, some, something more important. But most people use them for fun and try and create their own things. Um, the filament, um, there's different types of it. Uh, one of them is uh, called PLA, and it's basically a, a plastic that is uh, biodegradable. Probably has like a 10 or 12 year lifespan. And whatever you make in it, 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 will, it will last, but it can, it can get brittle after, after several years. And the other type of printer is a resin printer. Resin printers are more durable. Uh, it's, it's harder, it's some, some resins are flexible, and it's a liquid instead of a little spool that feeds in there. It's a liquid that creates these 3D items. And we have both types. 
But the difference is between these machines. The Prusa is kind of would fit on this uh, podium. And you know, it has a bed probably about maybe eight by eight and probably a height of probably about 12 inches. So it's built for smaller projects. The Creality uh, flatbed filament printer is a treadmill. So when you, when you print, you can not only print long things and tall things, you can print multiple things at the same time. And it will spool them off and take them off of the bed on their own and kind of drop them onto a table or into a bucket or wherever you want to. And that's also a filament printer. The Elegoo Saturn resin printer is that liquid printer I was talking about. The difference between the two is with a, with a filament printer, lots of times you can see little lines on the thing that you print. And they have to be either wet sanded down or uh, a, little, a little handled. But with the resin printer, they come out very smooth and precise. So there's a big difference between the two. And if you visit us, um, you'll be able to learn. Um, on that note, uh, starting in May, we are going to have small open houses for people to come in and sit with Matthew and see all of these machines and how they work. So keep your eye out for our newsletter, the whole story, for the May-June issue, and you'll see some of the dates where you can make an appointment and come in and see this stuff. Um, the Anycubic Wash Secure Station, that is what you do with a resin print after you're done. So to, to get it uh, clean and solid, it has to be dunked into a tank. And you, take, you dunk it into the tank, and then you pull it out a couple minutes later, and then it's set, and you're good to go. You can paint it or sand it or whatever you want to do with it. And then coming soon, and again, supply chain issues, we have a 3D scanner. So if there's something that you have that you want to replicate, or like a little part for a car, or a little part for like a toy train, or a little, you know, something that you have, a little sculpture, or, or you've created your own, uh, you know, uh, item and you want to duplicate it, we'll have a 3D scanner that can scan that item to the close to as perfection as possible, and then you can print that item as well. Um, some other items in there to spark creativity. Uh, we just got this the other day, and it's being set up now, is the Muse laser cutter, and it'll cut wood paper, acrylics, cardboard, all kinds of things. And what I mean by cut, if you create a design on a computer, uh, you can have it uh, cut it out totally out of the item, or you can have it etch it into the item, or you can engrave it into the item. Um, it is a crazy, amazing tool. I would highly recommend coming to check that one out. It's huge, but it is an amazing tool. Uh, as far as cutting and, and being precise with uh, stickers and foam, we have the Silhouette series, which has a Cameo, a Curio, and a Mint. And you can use paper, cardboard, foam, and cut things out, uh, like die cuts, uh, make stamps with them. Uh, we have vinyl that you can make uh, decals with, and we have both types of vinyl. So if you want, say you like to put something on your car window, but you know you don't want it outside the car window, you want it to be the opposite and stick on the inside of the window, we have that. We have the other kind where you can't put it on the outside, and you can reverse them both out to your liking. And then uh, the, la the last item is a photography light box, which is just a, some, something very simple. Uh, for We have a lot of photographers that love to come into the library, and it's just a little box with lights in it so that it, white background or black background so that you can take a perfect picture with perfect lighting, and then if you need to remove the background for it, say you have like a, uh, an Etsy store or you sell on Facebook and you want to have really good pictures for your items, you can use this little studio, take your pictures, be in and out in a couple minutes, it's all set up and ready to go for you. Um, I, I was going to take questions after, but since we're talking about the Creative Studio, do you, do you have any questions about the Creative Studio? Yeah? Um, if you had one specific skill you wanted to learn, are you obligated to take a training for all of the devices? No, no. In fact, uh, they're going to be offered individually per, per, per device. So you'll be able to do that and uh, be good to go. Yeah? Uh, how many parts the materials do you consume? Uh, he's, uh, this is great. Um, I, I'm happy to answer this and tell you that uh, the majority of them will be free. Okay? Wow. So uh, wow. the, the, the filament and the time spent on the 3D printing, there will be some costs attached to that. But for like laminating things, as of what they've told me at the beginning, most of it will be free. Anybody else? Okay. So coming soon, 
And we wish it was open when we opened, but again, supply chain has kind of halted us. We have a gaming room. So listen, we serve everybody, right? So while video games may not be your thing, maybe it is, um, the kids love them. And uh, we have a small room. It's really small. It will fit maybe three people, four people tops. And they'll be able to come in and try the newest video games. We're starting with a, what they call a Nintendo Switch. The games are pre-built on there. And uh, they'll be able to come in and try these games and have some fun with their friends and uh, decide whether or not that's the technology they want to invest in and see if they want to. Um, in the future, we're looking at adding the Xbox X and a PlayStation 5. And it will be similar. The games will be installed on the device. They have to check out controllers from the desk. And anybody can use it. It's not just for the kids. Anybody can use it. It's, it and come in, you check out the controllers, and you can play whatever we have available to you. And the recording studio. This is my second favorite room. Um, and this is how Ken and I actually met. So this room is uh, it's, it's going to be state of the art. Um, I am so excited. We don't, we've never had anything like this at Huntley. The high school has something like this for their kids, but the general public, they've never had anything like this available where they just walk in and use something. So not only is it a recording studio for audio, but it's a recording studio for video. One of the entire walls is set to be green screen, and it is, and you can come in and use some of our uh, video cameras or our uh, regular cameras. So if you need to shoot pictures, like if your group had identification cards or something like that, and you needed uh, a similar background to be on them, you can come in and take pictures. Uh, you can do that for yourself. If you have a small business and you want to shoot a commercial, you can use our video cameras with the green screen, set your backgrounds up, and do whatever you like. Um, we have all kinds of equipment. There's going to be a full mixing board where you'll be able to, if you play an instrument and you want to lay down some tracks or you want to rehearse with your friends, you'll be able to do that. Um, let's get into what's actually in there. This is, this is a, a pretty, pretty unique list. Like I said, we have the green screen wall. And we've already had, I, mean, I know you guys are having the, the police here in your next meeting. Uh, they're very interested in using that so they can do some photography with their uh, staff. Uh, we also have a portable room. So if for some reason, you know, the room's being used and we can find another one of the other rooms in the library, whether it's a study room or a quiet room, wherever we can set up, um, we have a portable green screen that also has a black, white, and blue backdrop so that you can take that in another room and set up and take your photos or shoot video. Uh, we have ring light options uh, and a variety of uh, prop lights um, for, for photography and video needs to make sure that your, pro your project goes the way you want it to. Um, there's obviously going to be a computer or two in there uh, for filming your podcast or short videos or recording whatever uh, you lay down as far as music or video. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, we have, we'll have a booth in there. You'll have a table and chairs and set up. So if you, and we have all the mics and the headsets. So if somebody was interested in doing a podcast and they needed a place to do it, you could reserve the room, come in, do your hour, hour and a half, two hours, however you're going to do it and uh, record it, take a flash drive with you, bring it with you. You can upload it to the internet right there if you needed to. Everything will be available in this room. There's a Sony digital video camera. And then as far as the mixing board and monitors, we have a PreSonus mixing board with personal monitor mixers, Studio Live mixer system. Sibelius Score is the software that you would use to record whatever you're going to uh, do musically. Uh, we have NT uh, G1 microphones and Shure SMX-S8 microphones, they're top of the line. Uh, we have Sony headsets, uh, onstage hex mics, uh, stands. Those are the ones that kind of move around with you, so they're flexible. So if you need to be low, you can be low, you can move it around. Uh, we have Electro Voice speakers, uh, Samsung HD monitors, so there'll be monitors on there, so whoever's in the mixing board area can see what's going on in the studio and vice versa. Um, we have PTZ cameras and controllers, and again, that's if, if you wanted to uh, kind of see what's going on in there and even possibly zoom, you'd be able to do it. And then there's storage areas, so all the equipment can be locked down and put away when it's all done, and then there's plenty of seating in there too. So if you have guests, there's almost like a little, I don't know if you want to call it a green room, but it's kind of like a little area where guests can sit while people are recording and hanging out in there. So that's pretty much my presentation. And I, like I said, I'll answer any questions you have. Um, 
But I, I encourage you, now is the time to get your library card. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't show a picture of the fireplace. Yeah, I did show a picture of the fireplace because at the time I put the presentation together, it wasn't finished. And it is now. And uh, I, again, uh, we had so many great people. I've, if I look back in my archives and I looked at the pictures, there's so many great pictures of people sitting in front of the old fireplace. And uh, I know there was uh, some people that really didn't want to see us change it. Um, but with the building change, it kind of needed to be updated too. And it, there were some things that needed to be repaired in it. Um, they just finished it, uh, I want to say, I want to say about two weeks ago. And um, I encouraged, it. the reason I didn't put it in there was because I think it's something that needs to be seen in person. It's beautiful. It turned out fantastic. It's always on during the winter, and there's plenty of seating on both sides of it now, so you can come in and relax and enjoy a good read or newspaper, or magazine, whatever it is you want to do. And uh, I hope to see all of you there. Hey, yeah. How about what the in the library? Wow, she has good questions. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so I don't know how you guys feel about masks, but we just went mask free, obviously, and that's uh, you know depending on how you feel, uh, it seems like our we've had an uptick in people coming in uh, since then. Um, but uh, our eating and drinking policy has always been the same. Um, you are allowed to bring covered beverages in. You're allowed to bring in small snacks. Uh, we've never, as far as, as long as I know that I've worked there, we've never really had, maybe the first year or two, they, they, we had a different director, and she was a little, little harder on that kind of thing. Um, but we've always had that policy where you can come in with a, with a, a, a you know, with water with a cap on it or a drink with a lid on it and small snacks. Um, that's never been an issue, and uh, just to show you that we are encouraging that um, in the, if you've been in the library and you know where the children's room is, there's a little waiting room right outside the children where there's a family bathroom. That's going to be our new uh, legacy wall for donors and library history. But in that area, there's a lot of seating, and there's going to be vending machines in there. So it's something that we encourage it. I mean, obviously, we don't want to see somebody coming in with five pizzas and you know <laughs> enjoying themselves. But you know, if you, if you have a cup of coffee and, and, and a, or a bottle of water and some snack, we've never, ever frowned on that ever. You have any more? You're, you asked great questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this info available on the website? So one of the things I brought with me, and uh, if you can't, if you, if you run out and you don't have them, you can get them at the library or you can go online and see it. There's a map in the back, and in the map, it's basically a floor plan of the new library. So you can see literally where everything is, and then there's a little uh, context with that that kind of shows you in what the new rooms are about. And inside that map, there's a QR code, and you guys are computer people, so I'm hoping you guys all know what that is, and if you don't, I'm happy to explain it. But if you scan that QR code, we did a fantastic video uh, to, to, for our grand opening, um, and it features a Sun City resident, so I love that part too. But uh, the video uh, is basically the same as my presentation. It's called The Fresh New Library. But before it gets into all of the new areas of the library, there's a wonderful uh, history of the Holly area public library, and it's narrated by Orion Samuelson, who I know is uh, my, one of my favorite people, but uh, he was great enough to do that for us. Him and his wife are awesome, and um, if you scan that code, it'll take you right to the video, and you can watch it. It has a, a, a pretty much uh, all the information that's here, but it's, it's an overview of kind of how we got to where we were with the new library over the years, and how the library started. <clears throat> yeah? Are the quiet room, the quiet room and study rooms monitored, or is there a time limit, or is it a first? So, so, so they, the, the quiet room um, is, uh, is they're all uh, first come first serve, and uh, our board, you know, we had a lot of uh, a lot of new policies to write when we added all these rooms, and the one thing that our board. Uh, First of all, I have to say thank you to them, even though they're not here, but just because they got us where we needed to go with this project, and um, it was difficult to get uh, all of our board members to agree on something, which is like any board, I'm sure. But um, they were adamant about making, we made these rooms, we want them to be available to people. We don't want to make it difficult for them to be used. We want them to be available. So the study rooms have been uh, really, uh, 
a, a great thing, and they've been utilized so many times already since we've been opening this at the collaboration room and the conference room. So the answer to your question simply is first come, first serve basis. Um, we do kind of have um, a one or two hour limitation on them, but if nobody else is using them, you're welcome to stay. So it is all first come, first serve as opposed to appointments for the conference room? No, the conference room and the collaboration room need to be reserved. But the quiet room and all the study rooms open and first come, first serve. Yes? Real basic question. Sure. Right away, um, DVDs, um, where, are they located with the DVDs? Uh, yeah, Playaways are in the fiction, nonfiction area, and they are located in the audiobook section. And we still check out quite a few of those, so I know we're getting more. Yes? Uh, on the movie, on the movie, is there a way, is a new book just coming out uh, in a day or two or maybe down the road? Is there a program in the movie that I could look and say, you know, uh, the box is like, you know, the library can fit that Um. The best way to search for materials from the library, at least my, from my perspective, Pam might tell you something different, but from my perspective, it's always best to use our online catalog because you can see some of the items before they're actually uh, in the collection and available. And they do show our digital items as well. Um, for the Digital Library of Illinois, which is how uh, we serve our books to Libby, um, <laughs> I, I don't know if inside the app there's a way to do that, but my suggestion would be, uh, because I don't want to give you misinformation, is ju just call our information desk and ask that one of them and they'll be able to tell you. But I know just from my personal usage, and I, I use our catalog all the time, is when I look for new materials or I want to see them, I look in the main catalog to see when it's going to be available. And most times, you know, if, if it's a, an item that you can place a hold on, you can do it from the catalog, so you can you can actually have your hold in before it's even out on the floor or in the system. Catalog, you can access either from our website or from our app. Oh. Is your circle of libraries that you exchange books with just in Northern Illinois, or is it all of Illinois, and or does it extend to Wisconsin? It's a great question, and uh, something I was going to touch on before I say goodbye. Um, one of the things that I don't know how many of you know, and I, I would bet Leanne or, or Pamela told you this, is that um, your library card, when you have a Humley library card, it's good in any library in Illinois. Any library in Illinois. Yeah. So while we might not have reciprocal borrowing with that library, if you bring your library card to that library, and there's, you, I would say if you if you had anyone that said no, it would be maybe less than one percent. But all you need to do is take your card, your existing card, and what they would do is they would register your card and put you on file that you're a Huntley Library card holder, and you should be able to borrow items from that library. So that's one of the great things about uh, our system in Illinois. But our our rail system, which is uh, where we are. Uh, we, we have a collaboration with, I think it's 23 or 24 other libraries. Um, they're actually, it used to be um, a, a different name where it was all, you know, um, all libraries in our vicinity. But uh, a couple of years back, I would probably say seven or eight, um, one of, two of the groups, uh, the funding kind of shifted and they merged. And so our district and the, the libraries that participate in that are actually further out of our boundaries. So, and new ones are joining all the time. That's the really good thing. We had two join this year. So anytime somebody joins, that's more content in, in the pool for everybody. Um, and then to, to help uh, along with that, like certain programs like with the Digital Library of Illinois and um, even our, our own items, uh, we have some special services that allow us to maybe have a few more copies of certain materials and you know a few more downloads per system so like with hoopla i know over the last couple of years we've increased from five to ten items you can check out if any of you use hoopla uh, and digital library uh, they've changed some of the, the specs where we have some huntley only material that some of the other libraries can't check out so it's specifically for our users so i hope that answers your question does right. your, does your budget going forward incorporate the support of replacing the technologies that you talked about because 
we're a computer club, but we do know that things have a lifespan. So everything that, what, I don't know if you heard everything I said with the Ralph Hardy thing, but that all came from donations. And we had previously budgeted for all of those things already. And um, I can't guarantee everything, but I know that we had previously budgeted for it. So we, you know, we've had to make a lot of changes. I mean, obviously, not not just for inflation, which is hitting everybody right now, and every, every the price of everything is going up. Um, but we also had to consider that we doubled the size of the building, and all of our utilities and bills are going to go up. So yeah, that was they all of the you know the board and our director Frank Novak they they uh, uh, had planned for that you know before this project even took off. Uh, one of the questions I had was uh, you brought up you brought up quite a few things on photography and VCR copying. Just remember that we have all that equipment in the computer lab, so um, we don't need to wait for him to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I was actually. He was to talking that. about uh, Chromebooks, and one of the things that I was going to remind everybody is if you have an old computer in your house and you're thinking of getting rid of it, you might want to just wait a while because uh, Chromebook is coming out with a program that you can put on that computer and make it into a full operating Chromebook, which maybe some of you don't know, that will cover 99% of your use of a computer. It will cover all your internet. You want to go on the internet and see anything? And uh, that really required, that's about almost 100% of your use. It will do spreadsheets. It will do uh, typing. Uh, there's a, a program in there that will do all that. It'll read Microsoft files. So it's going to be an interesting thing. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what it does, I am computer up here that has the program on. So we're talking about eight-year-old computers. It should be available soon. I think that's excellent information, actually. So I really appreciate the time to speak to you today, and I really do encourage you to come in. National Library Week is the first week of uh, April this year, and uh, there's no better time to get a library card. We'd love to see you. Our whole theme is connect with your library, and I've given you, uh, hopefully, uh, some items that will make you want to come in, stop in, and see what we're all about. And I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Bill. And we will see you all this month. Now remember, we still be here. So. <laughs>